Hey everybody, Tace and Rockefeller, Teton Valley Realty and Teton Valley Realty Blog. You're going to notice my uh, monthly market updates are going to go to more of a video format like I'm going to show you today and a little bit away from the formats that I have previously done which is written data that I'll still have available if you need that information. Uh, goes over monthly statistics such as the number of sales, the median and average uh, home sale prices in the different areas, condos and townhouses. Uh, but I wanted to do a little bit more uh, relevant information that can help the consumer understand what's happening in the market as opposed to just looking at data. And I wanted to do that in a video format. I'm still going to have a little bit of an informational bit attached to each uh, post in my blog. This video for each month will be embedded. And you've probably noticed I haven't uploaded a video for a little while. I've been trying to actually regrow my facial hair because of the unfortunate incident at this year's 2018 Tibor, Teton Board of Realtors Christmas party. I'll include a blurb on that for you as well. Uh, other than that, I'll get started on the 2018 November market updates and stay tuned for next week. I'll probably be getting started with my year-end data report. I just want to let a little more of that data come in. Um, for November 2018, I wanted to focus a little more on the statistics for uh, November 2018 compared to November 2017. Normally I'll do something a little bit differently. Normally I'll say uh, compared to last month, the data and uh, what's happened over the course of 30 days. But the information that I saw and the discrepancies I saw from 12 months ago uh, are much greater than from 30 days ago, although uh, November was a relatively slow month both in terms of dollar volume and the number of sales. Uh, however, uh, the biggest uh, note and the biggest point of interest that I saw when compared with November 2017 were the number of sales down by about 18% and the, um, I'm sorry, down by about 24%, and the dollar volume, meaning the total do dollar amount sold, down by only about 18%. So overall sales are down, uh, and I'm mostly contributing that to what's been uh, happening with inventory. Some people are a little bit worried about what's happening with the stock market. I will say that I've seen a lot of my customers come to me in the last 30 days or 60 days and say, you know what, I'm, I'm kind of tired of the stock market. I think it's reached its peak for a little while and we want to focus on investing in real estate. So I think we'll see a balancing act uh, in the different markets because of that. Uh, but I think the primary uh, point of interest that I saw uh, when reviewing the data, and it's pretty consistent with the month prior, but more, a little more pronounced for uh, 12 months ago, was again with the uh, both numbers being down, meaning the dollar amount and the sales. However, the dollar amount is only down by 18%, whereas the sales are down by 24%, uh, at least in, in this analysis that I looked at. And I think what that's telling us is uh, sales arguably dollar wise are higher per home or per sale than they were last year. Now this takes into account all types of sales. It goes a little bit into leasing but not really a lot of that data is available in the MLS because of the way we do things here. Uh, so that can be a little construed if you have a one big sale that happened uh, November 2017 versus one that didn't happen in November 2018. But I didn't see anything uh, that would make those numbers too inaccurate that happened over those two periods of time. And so I think what I'm, I'm really, my interpretation of what's happened is sale prices are still relatively strong um, and the sale volume, number of sales, are uh, lower and I think primarily because of the supply, the inventory. We've still got high demand, we're still showing a lot of real estate, we're still getting a lot of phone calls, but we just don't have a lot of that inventory available. So when I look at this, um, it shows me that sale prices are a little higher. Again, anytime you have low supply, that usually inflates your sale prices a little bit, and the demand is still there. Um, arguably, you could say the demand is less because of what these numbers show, but the key being that dollar amount. Um, and so I think the takeaway from this is uh, the supply levels still being lower than what they need to be to support the number of 
of homes that the market could absorb, which, which isn't happening. Uh, why is that happening? I think it's the same answer that I've been talking about for the last year or two. Construction costs, we're seeing construction costs that are 175, 200, uh, $300 a square foot for a modest uh, luxury home. I'm not going to go into, you know, super intricate heating systems or uh, insulation systems and that sort of thing, you know, crazy roofs or, or windows. Um, you get into that and I've seen numbers of $400 uh, square foot plus. Depending on where you're coming from, Idaho Falls, that seems like a lot. Uh, if you're coming from California, some of these areas where the materials are being used and delivered because of some of the natural disasters, that may not seem like a lot. But uh, at the end of the day, with the construction costs where they are, and thankfully land prices are still very affordable, it's hard to uh, build a product that's a good quality product that people want to invest in and buy um, at the prices they are today. So that's suppressing the inventory levels. That's a continuation of what we've been seeing. And I think uh, it's a little bit more dramatic in the numbers we're seeing because uh, that problem continues to persist. So hopefully we'll see some new construction. We're seeing quite a bit going on in Victor. Uh, Driggs still slow. Uh, we're seeing a little bit of construction, but mostly custom home, not too much in the spec home market. So I think as we go into next year, I know we've got some projects planned. Hopefully that can balance. But overall, I think this is a good thing. Not having an oversupply is keeping our market stable, uh, a responsible growth rate in terms of what's being constructed. I think all of that makes a lot of sense for our market. Again, thanks for watching. You'll see more and more of these monthly videos coming on. And again, uh, next month, stay tuned for the year-end 2018 report. Some interesting stuff there. Thanks for watching.